but a different group is currently the most likely to end your life in this country. It's a street gang called MS-13. It has 6,000 members. The government estimates that here in the U.S. It's active in almost every state and is growing rapidly. Just yesterday, they were suspected in a horrific quadruple murder on Long Island in New York. The question is, what's fueling their growth and what can we hope to do about it? Tim Clementi is a retired FBI special agent. He specialized in international counter-narcotics and counter-terrorism operations, and he joins us on the set here in Washington. Tim, thanks a lot. Thanks for, for having, having me, on. Tucker. So this is uh, a threat that has received weirdly little publicity, and I wouldn't even speculate as the reason why, but a lot of people have died as the result of MS-13 mm -hmm. activity. Give us a sense of the scope of this organization. Well, the organization began in the 1980s in Los Angeles, primarily first as a stoner gang. It wasn't even involved in drug distribution, it was more drug use. And then it became very violent because their founders actually came from the rebellion in El Salvador. So they were part of the peasant uh, guerrilla fighters, and so they were used to warfare. They brought that warfare to Los Angeles, and it's since spread out throughout the United States. Living here in the Washington, D.C. area, we see a terrible problem in Northern Virginia and throughout Maryland and D.C. proper, where it's really become almost the hub of MS activity in the United States. Los Angeles was the origination point, but now we see that this area of the United States, as well as Boston, Massachusetts, areas of New York and New Jersey, are being overrun. Anywhere there are communities from Central America, especially settled, that's where these guys move in, disrupt the neighborhood, disrupt all the local immigrants that are trying to become part of the American fabric, and they're destroying that fabric. Yeah, the everywhere. normal people suffer first, always. What's the federal response been like? Uh, the United States uh, FBI first formed a task force, I believe, about 2004 to deal with the problem, a little bit late to the party, but uh, that task force has since done raids all over the United States. There have been hundreds of arrests, but as you said, 6,000 reputed members. I've actually heard the number closer to eight to 10,000 throughout the United States. That was in a gang estimate in 2009. So these numbers are, are very fluid because we don't know who's a member. There's not, it's not like there's a registry we can go to and check that. And the problem is that there, to, traditionally MS-13 has been known by the tattoos, especially the facial tattoos, very proudly putting the MS um, label and the MS-13 all over their body. But now they're kind of shying away from that in some areas because they realize kind of stand out when you have the you, tattoo you MS-13 yeah. across your forehead. And so now they're moving towards let's not uh, tat ourselves so badly so that we can maybe get away with some more crimes. That's an even scarier factor because if they hide as well as they do now, it'll be so much tougher for us to find them when they're so in So the Salvadoran government is really worried about MS-13. Very I much I think so. they've designated them a terror organization. I don't think the U.S. government has. Why and should we? Uh, absolutely we should because when we look at what they do, there are some groups. You look at uh, Hezbollah, Hamas, the Muslim Brotherhood. Those are terror groups, but they're also legitimate political entities associated with that. Right. So they have a legitimate purpose somewhere. It's not true for MS-13. MS-13 is kidnapping, rape, child prostitution, murder, murder for hire. Those are the things they export and that's all they do. And so there's no legitimate group. Anybody that's associated with this MS-13 is involved in terrorism. And terrorism by definition is trying to change political attitudes and using force and the threat of violence to do that. And that's exactly what they do. So if the Salvadoran government thinks that's the case, and they would know, yeah. then what's the hesitation on the part of our government to make that designation? Honestly, I don't know. I don't know why we don't uh, look at the facts, look at it cold and, and detached from the fact that this isn't an immigrant group. This isn't, we're not talking about people that are emigrating here to become right. part of the United States. These are people that are coming here to commit crimes or are already here and being recruited to commit crimes. To so what and extent is it foreign controlled? Uh, well, there are, most of their leaders have come from El Salvador, but since Guatemala, Honduras, and now within the United States. So those leaders, there, there have been, been stories in like 2007, 2009, where crimes were committed overseas in Mexico or in Central America, and they fled into the United States to hide. That's not a good sign. Boy, it's been a pretty intense A block tonight. Mr. Clemente, thank you. Thank you, Tucker.